Dr. Melissa Longo. Welcome to Everyday Rockstar Moms, where every episode I'll interview moms just like you who are rocking it in their homes, raising their children, managing their households, building their careers, working on their relationships, dealing with challenges, finding success, trying to find balance, and themselves along the way. Every episode, you'll hear from women just like you of all ages and stages of motherhood, sharing their stories, life experiences, and leaving you with practical tips, ideas, and inspiration to help you rock your life. Hi, Nira. Welcome to the show today. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for having me. This is another fun episode for me where I get to sit in person with someone in the office here. Um, Why don't you start off by telling everyone a little bit about yourself and where you're at right now with work, with family, with relationship. Okay, so my name is Niru and uh, I'm a calling a native. I am um, the CEO and president of a small manufacturing company here in Collingwood um, with my partner and husband in life, Sylvain. And we have two young kids, uh, two girls age five and three that we try to raise as best as we can. (laughs) And what's it like? I mean, the first question that comes to mind is uh, a lot of couples work together. And what has that been like for you and your husband? Yeah, it's uh, good and bad. There's periods of where we want to kill each other at work and at home. Um, I grew up with parents that worked together and they fought constantly. They took their (laughs) work problems to um, the home and they brought their home problems to work and it it just kind of set the precedence that we would try and keep things separate. So, um, you know, the odd time I go to HR at work Mm -hmm. and complain about my husband and they throw their hands at me saying, what do you want me to do? um, But for the most part, we try and keep it separate. We don't take our our home issues to work and vice versa. Um, But, you know, it is what it is. Do you have any specific, um, like, key rituals or strategies that help you guys? Like, do you have a specific... Okay, no talking about work at dinner or, you know, weekends are for this or does it just kind of, I mean, every entrepreneur and business owner that I've known, work is life and it filters into your day-to-day <laughs> life and especially if you like the work that you do. Yeah, we both love the work that we do. So there's a lot of empathy between us as somebody's got to go into work after the kids go to bed. Um, we get it. So there, there's something nice about that. Um, we try not to talk about work at dinner mostly because we're just tired after being at work all day and you come home and the chaos that is trying to get food into two little kids is, mm. it's, it's enough that you don't want to talk about work. And so, um, we just end up not talking a lot at all. <laughs> and so <laughs> just trying to cope is enough that we don't talk about work at dinner time or sometimes at breakfast, but we don't often eat together at breakfast. So yeah. it's uh, it's not been difficult to try and separate. No. No. So then on the flip side, is it uh, difficult for you guys to maintain time as a couple to keep your relationship? I mean, you have young children, which is a hard stage of life for a lot of couples. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys make time for just, you know, Sylvana and you were the couple? Uh, we try, the odd time we'll go for lunch. We don't have a set date night. What we've tried to create a ritual is every couple of months, we'll just take off for a couple of days. Yeah. And so usually it's off to Toronto. Um, if it's a birthday, we'll take it a little bit longer. But um, once a year, we do an eight day trip away together. And we've done that for three or four years now. Um, that all kind of helps because I find the two hours by the time, you know, you sit down to dinner and just to get out and calm down, you have to go home. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's not it's not enough. And right. so um, it's easier just to every three months, we just take a couple of days, get down to Toronto, try some new restaurants, see our friends, and have two days. Yeah. And two full days and sort of our help has kind of kicked in and they know every four months we crave the escape and it seems to work really well and that two days really makes a huge difference as opposed to two hours. Recharge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned restaurants. I know that one of your passions is food. Yeah. <laughs> I love to eat and I love to cook. So uh, is that one of your hobbies? Is it something that, or is it just something you've done by necessity? I and mean, we all obviously need to cook for our families. But um, based on some of the images you captured on your Instagram feed, I love it. CEO who cooks, is, if you want to follow Nero, um, you love it. I, I love cooking. And so I'm trying to impart that passion. It's a passion for sure. Uh, Did you grow up with it? Um, my parents love food, but my mom always cooked fairly traditional Indian food, um, which for me was kind of boring, 
now in hindsight, it's nice. <laughs> it's kind of a change. Most people would think good food, food is, uh, is, is quite, you know, exciting. Yeah, when your mom sends you to school with lentils and rice for lunch in a thermos and you really just want a PB&J sandwich, it's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Um, now I wouldn't, I, I love it, you know, and after, I, right after I had my kids, my mom would drop off containers of lentils and rice and that's what I ate at three in the morning, you know, yeah. when I woke up to nurse or whatever, but... Um, my dad was always the adventurous cook in the family, so he always tried, you know, tortillas and pastas and things, but I grew up vegetarian, so, um, the, I guess, the diversity of food was sort of limited Mm -hmm. back then, um, but since I started traveling and being on my own and trying different foods and living in different countries, I... I love it. So I actually started a blog. Yeah? Yeah, about a month ago, just because I post food and people are like, well, how'd you make it? <laughs> so, I am in that camp. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, See Your Who Cooks is now sort of a blog, and uh, hopefully my recipes will get on there. And uh, at the very least, I'm thinking for one day for my kids, you know, yeah. to have recipes to take away to university or whenever they move out of the house. So is that something that soothes, it sounds like it soothes your soul. Absolutely. But is it something that helps you switch gears when you get home from work? Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, us having time to play and do things that make us as women happy is crucial to our sanity, really. Yeah. So I, I have a deal with my nanny and my nanny who looks after the kids while I'm at work. And so I get home usually five-ish um, and she stays until 5.30 at the very least, just so that I get that half an hour. And, you know, some pe- I've heard people say that they use their commute from home to work and back and forth just to sort of switch that gear. Mm-hmm. I'm really fortunate I have, you know, a five-minute commute to work at most. Mm-hmm. Um, so turning off from a busy day or a busy night, depending on whatever happened the night before, um, isn't often enough, that five mm-hmm. minutes. So that 30 minutes for me for cooking is absolutely soothing. And it's... I figured out how to just drown everything out during that 30 minutes. So if you've had a bad day at work, you're tenderizing. I'm tenderizing. I'm chopping like I've never chopped before. (laughs) Sharpening my knives. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But then I find that by the time I sit down to dinner, I've calmed myself down. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the process, I'm slowly trying to get my kids into the habit of helping me prep and they'll cut beans or chop mushrooms or Mm -hmm. do something, you know, pick the pasta that we're going to eat that day Mm -hmm. or, or whatever just to get them interested. Fun. Yeah. yeah. So now your girls are five and three, and so you had them while you were working yes. um, in, you know, the senior role at your, your business. Yeah. I actually bought the company three months before my first was born, and so it was a really busy time with acquisitions and loans. and. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. And, and your first child comes along yeah. and do, were you able to take any time off or? Yeah. So we, because we're self-employed, we have a lot of flexibility in the way we do things. I'm not eligible for EI, no. uh, which I found out after I applied. So, um, because my husband and I worked together, we actually worked at it that we were both going to be half time, mm-hmm. um, for the first three months. And that's when our nanny started with us was when I think Anouk was three months mm-hmm. old. And, um, so one would work the mornings, one would work the afternoons and we kind of switch at lunchtime. And if we both needed to be there for a meeting or a client visit, then my parents would kind of chip in and his parents would come and help when they could. So, Mm -hmm. um, with number two, um, two years later, we realized that, um, the pressure we put on our business partner was pretty high for Mm -hmm. that three months. And so we only took two weeks. We both took two weeks, stayed home and then uh, my husband's parents showed up and, they were home to help at that point, but we both went went back to work two weeks. So I think it sounds something to me uh, as a huge advantage for you uh, is your family support system. Yeah. So we created a sort of support system. You know, our family came to live with us. My parents live in town. I grew mm-hmm. up in Collingwood. So having family live in town was a huge help. Um, and they're because they retired months before baby one came along, it was actually a perfect time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, with our nanny, with my in-laws, with really anyone that was willing to hold a baby so I could just take 10 minutes to myself, <laughs> um, I was game, right? I, yeah. you know, and so, uh, I didn't end up nursing for very long just because with two weeks off and going back to work, there's, there's none of that, but that also helped in being able to pass off the baby mm-hmm. at any point in time in the middle of the night. If I knew I had a, you know, 8 a.m. conference call or a meeting mm-hmm. and baby's been up till three and I knew I needed four hours of sleep, well, you pass pass yeah. it off and ask for help. Yeah. Right? And I'm really, really good at asking for help. So. Did you have to learn that? Uh, or is that just yeah. part of your nature? No. Um, no, I had to learn it. And I mm-hmm. think it was just my way of coping. 
um, mm. because I realized I couldn't do everything and um, you can make yourself crazy trying to do everything. Mm -hmm. And so when people were willing to help, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to take it, I'm going to run with it and see what happens. And it, um, it's been for the benefit. I think my kids are so good with their grandparents and they're great with the nanny. She's wonderful with them. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a huge support. It's a weight off my shoulders. Yeah, and it's a mutually beneficial relationship, that grandparenting Absolutely. And, and child relationship. It's so unique and, and wonderful when it can happen as, you know, daily as it does for you. Yeah, and you know, my parents are known to drop in on a daily basis, 10 minutes, hang out with the kids, ask them about their day, and then they take off, but they're involved. Okay, so if your mom brings food and you decide you don't want it, I will walk <laughs> over and I will gladly accept some of the food. Now I don't mind the food. 20 years ago, I would have had a different tune, but yeah, yeah. now I don't mind. So let's talk a little bit about, I mean, you obviously love your work yeah. and do you ever have moments uh, when you're at home? Okay, maybe sure when the girls are going at each other and driving you nuts, you want to be at work, but do you ever have moments when you're at work where you wish you were at home with the kids or do you feel like you're missing out on things with the kids at times? Uh, yeah, it goes both ways. So I find when I miss out the most is when I'm traveling. So I have a pretty hectic travel schedule. For the last year or so, it's been mostly me solo for the first year or two after we had kids, we actually traveled with the kids. So, um, I mean, who's five has probably been on over a hundred flights in our lifetime. Like this kid is so well traveled. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, with one kid and three adults, the ratio of adults to kids is pretty good. So we took her everywhere. Yeah. Um, but then after number two came, we, it gets more complicated and more expensive. And, and different so, personalities. And different personalities and having to deal with a baby and a toddler on the road is just such a different dynamic. So I find I miss out the most now because I'm on the road. So I'm leaving today for an eight-day trip. And I was a little weepy this morning saying, oh, I'm not going to see my kids for eight days. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to teach my five-year-old how to call me this, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, and then conversely, Monday mornings at 8 a.m. is my favorite time of the week because I get to go back to work where I can close my office door. <laughs> And I know no one's going to be saying, mama, 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 for like the next six hours. So Yeah, it's it's a bit of a funny thing, you know. I mean, the I tease some, some people. It's like, when you're at work, everyone else needs you, sure. But you also can make a phone call uninterrupted generally and go to the bathroom uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have that self, that space uh, mentally and physically that you don't have when you're around your children. Because even my boys at 10 and 14, I mean... I'm answering their questions about so many random things while I'm trying to do other things a lot of the time, and it's um it's hard to focus. It's really hard to focus, yeah. And just being yeah, just being able to go to the bathroom and being able to close a door without somebody knocking or focus. screaming or or keeping an eye out for something, you know, to make sure nobody's hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it goes both ways. I find Friday afternoons I'm ready to be home, but by Monday morning I'm ready to go back ready to, to work. go back. Yeah. So many mothers also have. Um, you know, people have opinions or they have comments about lifestyle choices, or are you breastfeed or you don't breastfeed, or how did your, where did your child go to school, or, you know, you're going back to work, and sometimes, it, you know, women can get criticized. Have you ever had any um, challenges yourself or your husband where you made a decision for your family, and it's been met with some kind of criticism, whether family or friends or workmates? Yeah, there's, well, there's tons of criticism um, out there. I try and block out most of it, just because we chose to, to do our life the way we need to do it. Um, Part of it was just the amount of time I stayed home, especially mm -hmm. with Nora, because I was only I was only home for two weeks with her and went right back to work. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't breastfeed for long, and I didn't even parent for long either. I feel like, you know, that bond is different with her than it probably is with my older one. Um, and then there's also our sleep situation. It's terrible. My kids sleep horrendously. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it is we did it to ourselves by being on the road so much and switching time zones and countries and mm -hmm. um, a new parent had to crawl on a plane, right? Like she's, <laughs> that's just the way our life was for so many years that, that these kids are probably terrible sleepers as a result. And so we co-sleep a lot and yeah. there's a lot of criticism from anyone really that, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe that's not the best way to teach your kids how to sleep is by pulling them out of their beds every six weeks. But um, that's a decision we made and we stick with it. And yeah, there's our plenty kids of them. for it. Yeah, right. decisions so. like that. Um, so when you have those moments where, you know, someone's telling you something you don't like or, or criticizing something, um, what gets you through it? Uh, I pull out my phone and show them a photo of that trip that we were on and say, look how cute my kid is in front of Stonehenge, right? Yeah. Like, and, you know, it's just, 
everyone's life is different. And yeah. whenever I have a friend that has a kid, I'm like, you've got to do what works for you, right? Like every household is different. Every mm-hmm. needs between a couple is different. You know, every situation between the mother and the father or the father and father, whatever, it's, it's mm-hmm. going to be different. And no one can judge. You know, I certainly try not to judge other people because mm-hmm. everyone's circumstances are different. Their support system is different. I have a huge support system. I'm very, very fortunate. But I use it, and I employ it, and I make sure it's always there. Mm-hmm. Um, whether I like the invasion of privacy or not, I, that's just the choice I made, right? So Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I mean, I think each family it needs to do what's right for them. Absolutely. And, I mean, we certainly know what things are <laughs> crucial for child development and which things are neglectful. But aside from those you know, few key things, if it works for you and your child is happy and healthy, then... That's great. That's like, it, it shouldn't yeah. matter what anyone else thinks. But it's unfortunate that, you know, there's mommy wars and there's judgment and there's criticism. And um, it's an interesting story that I've heard on the show. Um, oh, yeah. Well, and the nursing was big. I think I, I got a lot of uh, opinions about, you know, I was not nursing enough or I, I would pump and try and bottle feed because I was prepping for my time off. And mm-hmm. um, I would get comments from everyone, from, you know, from family members to friends to doctors to nurses mm. like even the hospital had different ideas between the nursing staff from shift to shift mm. um and so you know you get lots of opinions but I'm pretty thick-skinned I've had to be because of my job and mm-hmm. uh, you just deal and say you know what this is what's best for my family my husband were, and I were always on the same page mm-hmm. um and he was always good about saying don't beat yourself up you know like at six weeks with a nuke I said no I gotta stop I don't have enough milk I'm not doing it right it's just it's too much. And he's mm. like, you're stressing yourself out. And he's like, he's like, I was bottle fed. You know, mm. it's fine. You know, I turned out okay. So, <laughs> But, you know, just having that open dialogue within the house was mm. super good because I, I really relied on his input. And that life. was probably one of those times when um, being in business together was to your advantage. Absolutely. Because he understood the value you were placing on your work life as well. Mm-hmm. And you're fortunate in that you have work that you, that you love. I love my work. You get to travel all kinds of uh, interesting places. I do, yeah. Uh, Also really uninteresting places. But (laughs) (laughs) like today I'm off to Norway tonight for for eight days. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a really grueling trip. I land tomorrow at noon and I go into meetings at 2 o'clock. And Mm -hmm. it is what it is. But I also get to be in Norway for a Mm -hmm. couple of days. And uh, it's good for the company and, you know. My family will. And I'm sure you're going to search out some uh, some good food while you're there. Always, yeah. I'm traveling with a foodie from work too, so uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of googling that tends to happen before <laughs> we leave because I love my food. So. So aside from cooking, um, what are the other things that you know bring you some joy in your life these days? Uh, sport. So okay. anyone that would have known me in high school would have known me as a band geek. I was not sporty. I never played sports, and when I got pregnant with a nuke five years ago. I had a miscarriage before her and um, my OBGYN here in Collingwood said, you need to take care, better care of yourself. You need to get in better shape. I was very heavy mm-hmm. um, and I had a really stressful work life. Like I was just learning the business. I was working 14 hour days and trying to build myself in the business. And um, I was heavy. I was almost 200 pounds and mm-hmm. I'm five foot three. That's pretty big. So um, when my doctor said, you know, you got to get a hold of your your body and be kinder to it and deal with stress better and um, I started exercising. I started with Aquafit and mm-hmm. kind of worked my way up from doing Aquafit with 65 year old ladies and <laughs> um, I signed up for my first triathlon this year. So good for you. Yeah. yeah. So I do lots of I do lots of activity and um, I kind of tried to carve out that time for myself because um, I I need it. I need it to decompress. I need it for stress release and uh, I need it to maintain my weight too because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 36 now and mm-hmm. um, my mom got diabetes when she was 38 and so I've got to be really careful about what I'm putting in my body and how I'm dispensing energy and um, stress and mm-hmm. yeah. So, and I'm trying to set precedence for my kids too, right? Mm-hmm. Because an um, I want them to be active and, you know, I feel like um, I all, I've always thought that being in sports and things like that can really help you in school life and Mm -hmm. you can avoid a lot of the other, you know, distractions as a teenager and things if you're kind of swayed in that direction. So Mm -hmm. trying to keep them active has kind of been on the forefront of 
my mind as mm-hmm. being a good mom too. Setting that precedent. So take us through a typical day for you then, if there is a typical day, because we know you've you've got the young ones and you're making time to work out and to train and you love to cook (laughs) and you're a full day at work. Is every day a little bit different? Do you have a a schedule every day? Um, I'd say like every Monday would be similar to Monday the following week and Tuesday would be similar to the following week, but throughout the week each day is a little bit different. Depends on the kids' activities, so what time I come home and... Hmm. Um, so the average day, you know, I get up, I'm not an early morning riser. Ideally I get up at eight. That's, that's kind of, <laughs> that sounds about my, my style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And luckily my little one doesn't get up until about that time too. So, um, we're up at eight and you know, my older one's up at six thirty, but my husband is too. And so they do what they do in the morning and then, um, get the kids off to school or a nuke off to school at eight forty five, and sort of eaten there. I'm off to work by about nine, nine fifteen. Um, either some days I come home for lunch, some days I stay at work, just depending on my day. And then I try and kick out of work usually at four, um, just to get a workout in Mm -hmm. to be home by five. And then, um, cook dinner at five, eat with the kids about five thirty, six o'clock. And then there's the nighttime routine. Mm -hmm. Takes us to about 8.30, sometimes nine. Last night it was seemed to be about 9.45. (laughs) Um, and then... Sometimes I'll work a little bit after the kids go to bed. Yeah. Just because I get up late, I end up staying up late. My husband's usually asleep by 10, 10.30. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sort of our time is between 9 and 10 together. And then after that, I'll work maybe for an hour or so. And then I'm off to bed. So yeah. schedule really works for you. I schedule everything. That's yeah. sort of That would be my... sense to be like one of your main productivity <laughs> tips. Yeah. I put, So my husband and I share a calendar. Um, and so when I'm going to work out, even if it's like I'm going to the Y for a run, it goes in the calendar. That way, one, he's not looking for me, so I'm not getting an abundance of where are you, what are we doing mm-hmm. for dinner. It's like he knows I'm at the gym. And same for him. So if he's off for a bike ride with a friend, it goes in the calendar, and we try not to make sure that that we're doing things at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so we don't ever work out together, so that makes it simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all in the calendar. So you look at the calendar first. If the kids have an activity, it's on the calendar. Um... If one of us is out of town, it's on the calendar. So we schedule everything. I kind of live and die by the schedule. Well, it's efficient, right? And and some people, um, it sounds to me from a lot of the women that I've chatted with on the show who are running, you know, full-time jobs and full-time lives with their family, it's a key. It's a key to keeping everyone um, on the same page. And there's so many ways that we can we can celebrate technology. Absolutely. And lists. And lists are a big thing for us. It used to be post-it notes. Um, It used to be me at 10 o'clock at night saying, my husband, we need toilet paper. We're out of toilet paper. And nobody remembering for three days. Yeah. We're out of toilet paper in all our bathrooms, and then it's bad. Um, (laughs) Especially with two girls. Oh, my gosh. So now we have have this online, not online, it's like an app on our phones, and it's Wonderlist, and we have a list for each store that we go to. There's one for Bulk Barn, there's one for Walmart, there's one for Grocery. Anytime you finish something, you throw it on the list and both of us access the list. So if we're going to go to a store, you know, I know he needs ibuprofen or Mm -hmm. he needs, you know, table ties or Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, and Mm -hmm. I put popcorn seasoning for bulk barn. And Mm -hmm. if he's gone, he goes and gets it. And then if I know our nanny's going to go shopping that day, I print her the list and off she goes too. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just that communication, right? Because FaceTime is not always calm (laughs) and so you're never in a brain space to remember everything and suddenly you're like oh I need this I'm off to the store and I pull up the list and away we go so um, if there's a tip I have it's to use those kind of little tools that are out there yeah they're free you just have to make sure your phones can do it or an iPad just take the iPad to the store and yeah it's got wi-fi it's uh it's handy yeah yeah so has parenting, uh, I mean, your girls are five and three, there's a long, a lot of parenting still ahead of you, obviously, <laughs> but at this part in your journey, has it been what you expected it to be? Uh, no, it's a lot harder, <laughs> a lot harder, um, and probably it's just been, it's just been more chaos than I thought it would ever be. I, I think I thought, oh, I, you know, I'd handle it like I handle everything else and that I would control it like I control the rest of my life, but. Controlling toddlers is sort of impossible. (laughs) So, yeah, no, it's not really been what I thought it was. It's got great moments. It's got horrible moments, too. It is Mm -hmm. is what it is, right? So if you had any piece of advice, just as we're wrapping up here today, um, anything that you would tell new moms? Uh, 
just to keep moving forward, try not to live with all the things that happened yesterday or two hours ago and or in the moment, you know, just I find that when things are going crazy right now, you just think about the next five minutes, you know, kids throwing a temper tantrum, just walk away. Uh, I always use the technique for my, my screaming toddlers is count backwards from 10 to 1. Mm-hmm. And it forces them to calm themselves down. Um, in training for this triathlon, I was out in really choppy waters the other day, and uh, I needed to use it on myself <laughs> just because I was I felt like I was panicking out in the water. You know, I'm yeah. I'm 300 meters from shore and it's choppy, and I'm starting to panic. and And my trainer was out there. He's like, "What are you gonna do?" He's like, "This is good practice." And I'm like, "I'm gonna count from 10 to 1, like I tell my kids," and it works, mm-hmm. right? So just to breathe mm-hmm. and just move forward and don't worry about the past and don't have regrets because. It is what it is, right? It's yeah, not you, worth it. You it's can't not... go backwards. No. You can only move forward. So ideally, if we can learn from challenges with our kids and maybe handle them differently in the future or, you know, for we can grow as people, obviously, with our kids. But, yeah, you can't go You can't go backwards. No. So all you can do is learn from what you happened in the past. That's it. That's it. And just keep plowing forward. Mm-hmm. And try not to dwell on the good or the bad in the past. It's just it is what it is. Accept it. Move on. And, mm-hmm. Yeah learn from it for sure. Well, thank you so much for uh, squeezing in this interview today. I'm going to let you uh, take off uh, to work and, and, and get on your travel plans today. How can people connect with you if they want to learn more about your recipes? Um, so the best place, uh, I just, just started a blog. It's probably mm-hmm. a month or month and a half old. Um, it's ceowhocooks.com. Okay. And um, through WordPress. And uh, there's you can contact me through there. My Instagram feed's through there as well so you can see yeah. what I'm cooking or eating that day yeah um, and uh, all my recipes eventually will get on there great well I wish you all the best in your upcoming triathlon Thank and uh, in work and travel and, and family life thanks for your time today thanks for having me there you have it a great story today from a mom who rocks I hope you enjoyed today's show Be sure to head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. When you do that, I'll be sending you a copy of my top 10 tips for moms. These are some of my personal and practical strategies I believe that as women we can all benefit from and, and help us be emotionally and physically as healthy as we can be. When you're also there on iTunes, I would also love it if you left a review. It's really important uh, to leave some reviews because that helps other people find the podcast and it helps helps inspire them to listen and and potentially gain some insight from the podcast. Tell other moms that you know would benefit from this show or most certainly uh, nominate them and let me know who you think I should be interviewing. I'd love for you to connect with us on Facebook as well. Head on over to Everyday Rockstar Mom and join our community there. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time.